Hello everybody, this is Al DePaulo and I'm the Partner Products Manager and today I wanted to take a quick look at the BobArt software and using BobArt to trace patterns that you'll use for uh, sheet metal uh, sheet metal based applications uh, typically these patterns are made out of cardboard and then from there you may want to use those cardboard patterns uh, to generate drawing files and use those drawing files to program like a plasma cutter. So if you're going to be importing images, uh, you can scan these images in with a regular scanner and save them as an image file or bring uh, the larger patterns uh, into Kinko's or some other uh, printing company that would have a scanning service. Now you just need regular JPEG, bitmaps, GIF TIFFs. Um, you can see here we have a number of different patterns uh, that have been scanned and to start with I'm gonna work with one of the simpler files now once you've loaded that image you'll see that it will come up in the background uh, one of your hotkeys is by clicking I on your keyboard you can hide the image and bring it up uh, or uh, hide it away now it's always recommended when you do a scan that along with the pattern you scan some kind of uh, rule, uh, ruler. Uh, this way, when you bring the image in, you'll have a reference of a scale, and then that would give you the ability to uh, scale your geometry up or down uh, and know uh, how big it is. Uh, the other thing you could do as well is you could actually measure the pattern and write on uh, what the size of the the pattern is as well so that way you can uh, use your scaling process. Now uh, I always like to create a new layer before I start drawing and make that active. Uh, this gives me the ability to separate out uh, different parts of your geometry and to cover this shape here I'm using my mouse wheel to zoom in and out. If you try to zoom in and out and it's not zooming just click your left mouse button in the drawing window and then you can use your mouse button to zoom in and out. Now from here, what I want to do is trace around the outside of this shape here, okay? Now there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. We could do a line sketch, we could do a line continuous, or we could also do a rectangle, okay? So I'm going to show you each of these different methods. Probably the easiest thing to do would be a rectangle. You can click on sketch, you can move your mouse to this corner, click your left mouse button one time, drag your mouse down to the bottom corner over here, click your mouse button another time, and now we've drawn this rectangle. From here you can hit I on your keyboard, and then you can see that uh, we have that shape. Uh, from there you can create dimensions. So I'll create a new layer, call it dimension. I can do horizontal and I can click from this corner to this corner. The shape is 2339. I can go to dimensions vertical and click from this line to this line and you can see the dimension is 2.813. Now, if you need to make an adjustment to the size of this shape, if you have a known size, we do have a really nice feature called stretch and using this feature we can say multiple entities horizontal vertical and we'll give it a delta position and we can grab these three lines here right click OK and then from here we can say go X minus 0.125 and you can see now we were able to uh, stretch the geometry uh, an eighth of an inch. Okay, so after you've drawn a part, if you do need to slightly adjust the dimensions, you can do so. If we do make an adjustment to the dimension of the part, our dimensions are no longer current, so we can delete our dimensions and we can choose dimension again. So we'll say horizontal, and now we can go to dimension vertical, and you can see that we now have uh, updated dimensions. I guess I didn't need to change the vertical dimension, but I didn't re-need to generate the vertical, but you get the idea. Now from here, if we wanted to create a fold line right in the center of this, uh, the easiest way to do that would be to uh, draw a parallel line. So what I'm gonna do is change my line style to a dotted line. 
I will do line parallel. I'll take the width of the part or the dimension in X, 2.464 divided by 2. Click on this line and right there you can see we now have our fold line. Okay. The only other thing that we might want to do is take this geometry and move it closer to zero. So we can go to Utilities, Translate, Sketch Enter. We'll select everything that we want to move. Right click OK. We're going to pick our start position and enter our end position. In this case I want it to be a quarter inch off the edge of the material. So I'll add a quarter inch in X, quarter inch in Y. I will shift left click on this bottom line, click on our snap point, right click cancel to finish, and now you can see we were able to move our geometry a quarter inch off of zero, and we were also able to create our dimensions and also our bend line. If we needed to dimension our bend line, we could do that as well. Dimension horizontal, grab these two areas here, and we can throw that down as well. Now if you want to print this out, which is sometimes a good thing to do, you can go to File and Print. Usually what you'd want to print at that point is the drawing scale, and that would print it out as an actual size, and you could use that as a reference for your folding. Um, Alright, so now let's just back up for just a second and get rid of some of this stuff. Alright, now, let's say that we didn't want to use the rectangle function. What's another way that we could trace around this shape? Well, we could do line, sketch, horizontal, and we can do a window position here. Click our left mouse button, drag out a horizontal line. Oh, I'll tell you what, let me go back to a solid line here. So we'll do left click, drag out a horizontal, left click, drag out a horizontal, then we'll say vertical, left click, drag out a vertical, left click, drag out a vertical. Now typically when I do this I like the corners to go past and then I'll trim them uh, after after I've drawn them, I'll trim them. Uh, it's really difficult to uh, pick the uh, endpoints if you try to draw it exactly on the corner. So it's easier just to extend them past and then you can come in and either use the quick trim, what allows you to click on what you want to delete, or you could do trim two entities, which allows you to pick two entities and it will trim their intersections, or you could do one entity, which allows you to do one at a time. Uh, at this point my preferred method is quick trim and I just click on what I want to delete. So that's another method in which you can use to draw up the shape. Now if we don't want to use line sketch we can use line continuous and in this case we, we can do sketch horizontal again starting off the part left click I'll go right to the edge, left click, sketch vertical, bring this up, left click, sketch horizontal, left click, sketch vertical, left click, right click, cancel, uh, left click in the CAD window, I to hide the image, and then we can come in here and get rid of our edges. So there's just a couple of ways in which you can use a loaded bob art image in the background and to trace around it uh, to use that geometry for plasma cutting uh, for pattern making for sheet metal. Hopefully you guys found this lesson on using bob art for tracing patterns to be very useful. Uh, we'll be picking up some new topics here for plasma cutting and woodworking and milling and more. Uh, please uh, check out Bobcat After Dark and uh, you know download a demo and start working with the software if you get a chance. Really appreciate you guys tuning in today and uh, look forward to putting together some more videos here in the near future. Thank you so much guys.